Hey there, Swarmers! Welcome back to The Hive. What should we talk about today? Well, hive, buzzing, bees, pollinators. <gasps> Let's talk about pollination. Did you know, in the United States, pollination by honeybees, native bees, and other insects produces 40 billion dollars worth of economic value every year. In fact, 150 food crops in the U.S. are dependent on pollinators, and these include almost all fruit and grain crops. Globally, more than half of the world's diet of fats and oils come from animal-pollinated plants. Think oil palm, canola, and sunflowers. And 75% of an estimated 1,300 types of plants grown around the world for foods, medicines, spices, condiments, and fabric need pollinators. So. What exactly is pollination? Simply put, pollination occurs when pollen is transferred from the male parts to the female parts of the same or another flowering plant, which enables fertilization and the production of seeds. Seeds ultimately become more plants. Pollinators help facilitate this process by visiting flowers in search of food, mates, shelter, and nest building materials. As they travel from plant to plant, they inadvertently carry on their bodies the pollen that will transfer the genetic material critical for a plant's reproduction. About 80% of the world's flowering plants, including one-third of our food crops, actually depend on animal pollinators to reproduce. Pollinators include animals such as birds, lemurs, bees, bats, possums, lizards, beetles, skinks, butterflies, and moths. Many species of animals can be pollinators for a wide range of different plants. For example, in Madagascar, lemurs, also the world's largest pollinators, are the only pollinators for a few species of trees, as they transfer pollen from tree to tree and feed on nectar-rich flowering plants. The Neronia skinks in Brazil help pollinate the leguminous Malungu tree, and the honey possums of Australia pollinate the flowers of Banksia and eucalyptus flowers. Flying insects like bees, bats, and birds Birds, though, are the most common pollinators. Pollinators are vital for ecosystems and agriculture. Most plant species rely on pollinators to reproduce, and humans rely on pollinators for their food and to sustain our ecosystems. Pollinators, however, are in danger worldwide and are suffering from habitat loss, chemical misuse, diseases and parasites, and the introduction of invasive plant and animal species. The United States has lost over 50% of its managed honeybee colonies over the past decade. So how can we help our pollinators? Planting and gardening. Research shows that the survival of pollinators relies on the diversity of plants. Creating home gardens is an amazing way you can promote the safety of pollinators because home gardens provide a rich nectar source, which attracts and fuels a pollinator. A UK study published in the Journal of Ecology found that urban areas serve as an extremely rich food reservoir for pollinating insects like bees and wasps. Individual gardeners, therefore, have significant roles to play in pollinator conservation because ornamental plants are a crucial source of nectar in towns and cities. The study found that home gardens that are located within towns and cities account for 85% of the nectar that gives pollinators energy. When gardening to attract pollinators, it is best to use a variety of plants and choose the right location. You should consider if a plant grows best in a sunny or shady location, and what soil soil type the plant is best suited for. Planting in clumps instead of single plants helps pollinators find flowering plants. Plants native to your region are recommended because they have adapted to the local climate, soil, and native pollinators have evolved in tandem with them. Native plants also require less maintenance and tend to be hardier. It's also recommended to avoid modern hybrid flowers because plant breeders have bred the pollen and nectar out of these blossoms. Eliminating pesticides when possible is important when gardening because these prove to be especially toxic to bees. But if you must use them, opt for natural solutions first. Read the labels carefully and try to spray at night when bees and other pollinators are not active. You can also provide a hummingbird feeder in your garden. You can make your own artificial nectar with four parts water to one part table sugar. Be sure not to use artificial sweeteners, honey, or fruit juices. 
There's never been a better time to plan and plant a garden than now. Let's help protect our vital pollinators. Thanks so much for joining us, Swarmers. Hey, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you never miss any of the latest buzz from the hive. See you next time. Thank you.